Hey, Factor 5 Roaster 682. We are going to try to start it this weekend. Uh, this is May 23rd, something like that. Uh, Memorial Day weekend is this weekend, so been busy trying to get things in line to be able to start it. So this video is going to be just kind of a summary of where I'm at in my um, setup to be able to get it started. Um, doing the starting, I'm not going to have the cooling system. Uh, so the radiator I've stuff I've, I've worked on, I might have a little bit of time to be able to do it. However, I'm not planning on having the cooling system. So these are going to be short run starts. Um, there won't be any water going through the system. So keep that in mind as you look at this. All right, um, the starter. Just purchased this starter. Um, got back here, the wiring here, that wire, the thick wire, four gauge is coming from the battery. I know, I know, it's not enough. The three other red wires are coming from the Ron Francis harness. And one of them is for battery. One goes to the switch and the other one goes to powering the fuse box, I believe. Uh, this black guy right here is connected to the, this is an extension of the clutch safety switch. Uh, let's see. Um, so we're just, I've left it out right now because I want to test it before putting it in and we're not hooked up to the battery yet. All right, so that's that's the starter, obviously. Plug wires, we've got our layout here. The distributor is loosely in there because we still need to prime the, the system with oil. So I've got a um, couple extensions, a quarter inch socket, and uh, some quarter inch extensions. And I'm gonna power that with my drill to take the distributor out, put that down into the oil pump and turn that. You know, as I say that, I don't know if I'm going clockwise or counterclockwise when spinning that pump, but I will find out. The alternator belt, uh, water pump, and power steering, uh, the belt is not on there. The coolant obviously is not gonna be going on. This power steering pump is loose right now. Uh, I still need to put on pulley. I was gonna take it off and paint it um, take it off and get the fittings I need in order to tie it into the power steering as well. All right, took a three or four minute break there. Uh, talk with my wife, my lovely wife. So um, I don't know where I left off. So I'm going to talk about the Phytech system. It's pretty much wired up. Um, the only two things I have to finish wiring up is the white wire which is a key wire coming to a constant power source. That right there is from the Ron Fances carburetor um, harness, and that's the electric choke wire there. There is a fan that you need to hook up as well once we get the fan in here, but for the startup, I don't have that hooked up. So uh, to talk about the Phytech wiring, which... I've done just a little video earlier talking about only the Phytech wiring, so you can see that if you want, but it's the same conversation I'm about to have. Okay, this harness here is rigid into the system. It is fused coming out, and then it has this pigtail here that you can plug into. Now, this harness here has six different wires. One is the blue wire. The blue wire goes to the negative on the coil. Where's our coil? There it is. Right there. It's going to the negative on the coil. The yellow wire it goes to the fan connection, which I think eventually will be attached to this green wire that comes from the harness. Because this green wire is cooling fan. Alright. Yeah, you don't need to see the words. Take my word for it. Alright, the white wire is key on. Um, we talked about that one. The black wire is for the air conditioning. If you have air conditioning and you turn it on, 
it senses that and it will up your RPM. The orange wire is for the fuel pump that is run to the back uh, where my intake fuel pump is and I have not hooked it up yet nor do I know exactly how I'm going to be hooking it up. The red wire is for the battery and that's to go to the battery. However, it didn't reach in the back so I've run it to the starter right there down below. So that's where my red wire is. So don't take this as gospel. This is just the way I've, I've done it. All right, the oxygen sensor harness is, comes out the back here and I've got that down into my J pipe. The water temperature sensor is also hard plumbed out here and is right there in my intake snapped into position. Um, back here are the pigtails for the computer and this is the line and it plugs right into this computer which is then portable and you can reach it into your cabin and there's enough cable for that. Uh, let's see and then there is uh, let's talk about the distributor. I've never done a distributor before so I think that this is where the vacuum line goes. This is the advance which I'm going to be learning exactly what that is and I believe that that five or three sixteenths hose which this is fuel hose right now because the store didn't have vacuum line uh, goes into this little guy here. This three eighths vacuum line down below goes to the brake booster and then the other vacuum lines there I'm not sure where those go and this guy right here I'm not sure where that vacuum line goes as well I may just well I should find out where it goes I may just cap it but I want to know and need to know everything about it all right then the fuel lines the Fitech has an internal pressure regulator fuel regulator in there this is my return line this is a 3 8 that's going to run down to the quarter inch return line this is a 3 8 that's going to this is my supply this is a 3 8 that's going to run down to a 5 16 inch rigid line which is down here and those are compression fittings that go to a JIC um, which has a barb on the other side a little bit more detail in the other Fitech conversation um, and that is pretty much it I believe that I need to do for the Fitech all right for my distributor it's a a summit ready to run distributor and so it has just this pigtail that comes out and it has three wires the red goes to the positive of the coil the orange goes to the negative of the coil and the black goes to ground so I plugged in that pigtail and did exactly that this is the summit coil that they recommend to have with the summit distribu distributor I decided to go ahead and match them together because if there's anything wrong with them then summit is pretty good about you know owning their own and uh, swapping things out so I feel more comfortable having their product this purple wire is from the harness the Ron Francis carbureted harness and that also goes to the negative um, on the coil side this is the tack wire and it will plug into the main chassis harness right here and then we'll eventually end up at our tack which you see that purple wire for the beautiful tack all right um, let's see some other things for the start that I want to do and, and need to take care of the oil pressure oh, guys guys on the form you it's a, a blessing and a curse so I don't know how to hook up the oil pressure so I asked how do you hook up the oil pressure this is my gauge right here on the back there's that hole there sorry it's not on focus and then I've got down below here um, this sending unit here which I have now learned is for an electric 
um, pressure, oil pressure gauge. So the answer, my gauge is mechanical and what I need to do is buy a cable and Autometer rec recommends a stainless steel hose that will run from the meter all the way down into the engine block. And I stupidly asked on the forum, uh, what kind of pressure sensor do I get for a mechanical one? They said, well, you idiot, just thread it right into the, into the block. I said, well, that makes perfect sense. Why didn't I think of that? So that's what I ordered. And then my good buddies keep saying on the forum, you know, you should go electric, you should go electric, you should go electric. And I'm thinking, I'm trying to start. I don't need to be changing out my oil gauge, pressure gauge. But then the more I think about it, in order to get this gauge out of this dash, which this isn't the final dash, I mean, I'm going to stay with the brush and lunar for a while, but in order to be able to do that, and the dash isn't mounted yet, I'm going to have to disconnect the oil line from this gauge. Well, I don't want to do that and have some oil around back in here. So I took out the gauge. This is loose because I took it out. It's easy to come out. It's just holding in position right now. And I'm going to have it as a just a remote right here so I can check the oil pressure when I'm priming the system to make sure my oil pump and everything is working for the first start. But I was thinking, well, maybe I should look at the electrical gauges. So I've got one on order. It should be here tomorrow. And it should look, and I hope it looks, very similar to my gauges. I mean, that's, I like the mechanical gauges. I like the looks of them, the simplicity of them. No, they're not in the right position. But I like the, I like the simplicity of them. So the electric one looks similar. I'm going to get it and see if it does look um, the same. If it does, then I'll probably switch to electrical. So, thank you guys on the forum for making my life easier <laughs> and my wallet lighter again. That's the thing, you know, when I put this this video on here, I'm sure there's going to be 20 things on there that people are going to say you've done wrong and you should redo. And I'm used to that. All right, Go Street 400 horsepower, that's what I've got. All right, what else do we have to do for the first start? Well, I've got my ignition switch here ready. Uh, we do need to hook up the battery. The battery is back here. I bought a, a new battery that does not fit into my battery box. That was very convenient to start off with. But the cable does go on to the battery, uh, fits on there. So we will have juice. That loose line right there, line right there is for my... Uh, fuel pressure, I'm um, excuse me, my fuel pump. Um, Alright, so we've got juice. We're going to put a little gas in there. Uh, we've got, we're going to put some oil. We're going to prime the system. We're going to take the valve covers off to make sure that we can see the oil coming through. Let's see, what else? Um, we're not going to have a cooling system. We're going to test the starter before installing it. We're going to make sure everything's tight. There are notes around there that the fuel lines, the JICs, are not tight right now. Let's see, we've got um, on my list here also, find top dead center for cylinder one. We need to do that before putting the distributor back in. Uh, the Phytec wiring, the springs on the Phytec throttle. And what I'm referring to there is this mechanism here with my throttle cable. I can't really figure out how that attaches to this Phytech system yet. So I'll uh, figure that out, but that's probably how we're going to be revving it when we start our car this glorious Saturday and finally hear her. I think I may put the side pipes on just to get the full look. All right, what else we got? Phytech programming because there is some programming that you need to do before just starting it up. It's in the directions uh, Let's see. I added the coil. I made new coil to distributor cable. Uh, it's because I was going to have a, a uh, 
what's it called a cylinder coil but I decided to go with the flat one the cylinder one had a female plug on it uh, this one the summit one has a male plug on it so I did not have to make another cable all right wiring to the coil did that I need to add transmission fluid the transmission fluid I got was the automatic transmission fluid uh, Dextron and Mercon 3 I believe something of that nature I can't remember what they're called but apparently automatic transmission fluid goes into the T5 2.8 quarts all right uh, mount ignition switch that's because I was going to put it in the dash but I'm not plug in the harness that's for the carb harness that's still a little loose right there need to finish that up um, oil line to gauge Teflon pipe threads that's in case we stay with the mechanical add oil fill oil filter prime oil system with tool on pump check the pressure add gas hook up the battery check the grounds disconnect key ready that's my um, emergency disconnect test fuel pump disconnect line and contain gas when testing so the thought there is to take off the supply off the Phytech and run the fuel pump and have that supply line in a container to make sure that gas is getting in there um, and look for leaks hook up the plug wires correctly on distributor cap I have done that now where is my key that I had um, that showed the plug location I'm not sure where that went but uh, did the research on that and I'm confident that that's wrong no I'm I'm sure it's okay uh, let's see tighten fuel lines look for fuel like hookup plugs correctly are all oil openings sealed we need to make sure that's all sealed uh, we're going to take this valve cover off when we do the priming of the line to make sure oil comes through the rocker um, but um, that needs to be put back on as well fire extinguisher roll the car outside camera rolling turn key all right so that's kind of it um, I've got another list that's up on the wall here let's see what we got we've got battery move ground to battery starter solenoid or starter oil ordered the Lincoln starter wire did that oil sending unit oil pressure cable wire EFI distributor vacuum lines oil this is boring information I know sorry but that's where we are it's going to be successful